Hello and welcome to the small presentation on IPv6 ISATAP tunneling. This is Akshay Kumar working as a corporate trainer at Pony Solutions Limited for various Cisco routing and switching technology. Today I am going to discuss the functionality of ISATAP tunneling. This is a very common network scenario where we are running IPv6 at the end of the networks between router 4 and router 1, between router 2 and router 5, and between router 3 and router 6. The core of the network is still running IPv4. So this is a very common problem that we find when we are moving from IPv4 to IPv6. Router 1, Router 2 and Router 3 are the dual stack routers that are running IPv6 at one end and they are running IPv4 at the other. So the immediate solution to this problem is to configure tunneling between the dual stack routers that is R1, R2 and R3. When we talk about tunneling, there are various ways we can configure tunneling between the dual stack routers. Number one being the manual tunnel, second one is 624 automatic tunnel and I finally IZATAP tunnel. In the 624 and IZATAP, these are automatic tunnels in nature, whereas manual tunnel is static. So before we jump deeper into the IZATAP tunneling, let me discuss the various drawbacks that manual tunneling has. A manual tunnel is point to point in nature. So we need one tunnel between router 1 and router 2. Then one more tunnel is required between router 1 and 3. And finally we need one more tunnel between router 2 and router 3. So we can say that if we go for a manual tunnel, then it will be a full mash of tunnels running among the dual stack routers. In a huge network it is impractical to manage all these tunnels. So the better solution for this problem is to have any of the automatic tunnel either 624 or IZATAP. Here we are going to discuss IZATAP tunneling. Now IZATAP is a automatic point to multipoint tunnel and it treats the underlying IPv4 network as a non-broadcast multi-access network. That is IZATAP being point to multipoint in nature, one tunnel interface at each router can dynamically connect to any of the tunnel endpoint. So using one tunnel interface I can connect between router 1 and 2 and dynamically I can also connect to router 1 and router 3. So we can say that the tunnel endpoint is dynamically discovered, dynamically learned depending upon which network we are trying to access. Router 1 is configured to use a loopback of 1.1.1.1 as a tunnel source. Likewise, router 2 is going to use 2.2.2.2 as a tunnel source and router 3 is going to use 3.3.3.3 as a tunnel source. Another aspect about IZATAP tunneling is that IZATAP tunneling treats the underlying IPv4 network as a non-broadcast multi-access, which means that this underlying network between 1, 2 and 3 is going to act as a layer 2 NBMA network. That is why router 1 2 and 3 should be in the same subnet, the tunnel interface should be in the same subnet and then they can exchange routing updates for IPv6. Before we go into the configuration aspect of the IZATAP tunneling, let us discuss the IZATAP addressing. Now IZATAP addressing uses a different addressing approach. When we are defining the IPv6 address for our IZATAP tunnel, the first 64 bits can be of user's choice. The fifth and the sixth block in the IPv6 address is fixed to 00005 EFE. Now this is the IZATAP identifier which will automatically be inserted as soon as we change our tunnel mode to IZATAP. The seventh and the eighth block of the IPv6 address is derived or we can say it is engineered from the IPv4 tunnel source that we are using. So let us say that router 1, 2 and 3 are going to be the tunnel endpoints. Router 1 is having a loopback of 1.1.1 which will act as a tunnel source at R1. So when we configure R1 with some IPv6 address at the tunnel interface, the first four blocks of the IPv6 address can be of user's choice. So for example here I am using 2002db8bcf colon 123. The 5th 
and the sixth block is fixed to 0005 ESE so this is the isotype identifier the seventh and the eighth block is derived from the tunnel source whichever IPv4 address I am using as a tunnel source will be converted into hexadecimal and will be used in the IPv6 address so just for an example my IPv4 address is 1.1.1.1 we can convert it into binary and then we can convert it into hexadecimal so the hexadecimal equivalent of 1.1.1.1 uh, is 0101 colon 0101 this value goes here now how the dyna how isotap tunnel discovers the tunnel endpoint dynamically now once the tunnel is set up router 1 2 and 3 they will exchange the routing updates router 2 sends a network update about IPv6 network with its tunnel address as the next hop address for R1 same way R3 is going to advertise a network to R1 with its tunnel address as the next hop address for R1 so by looking at the next hop address router 1 will reverse engineer the tunnel destination from the tunnel address so let us see how the isotap tunneling is configured here I am going to use the same scenario that we discussed before we are having IPv6 between router 4 and 1 between router 2 and 5 and finally between router 3 and 6 Router 1 has got a loopback of 1111, Router 2 has got a loopback of 2.2.2.2 and finally Router 3 is going to use 3.3.3.3 as the tunnel source. So first of all, let me configure a tunnel interface on R1 and then on Router 2 and Router 3. So the first step is to define your tunnel interface and then we can define our tunnel address. So here the first 64 bits are defined by the user so I am defining it to be 2002 colon db8 colon bcf colon 123 and the remaining 4 blocks will be automatically engineered so I can just skip those and I can say slash 64 and I can just finish my command using eui 64 notation next is I have to specify my tunnel source which is loopback 1 there is no need to specify destination because if we define the tunnel destination it will be a static tunnel so we want the tunnel to discover the destination dynamically the next thing that we need to define here is tunnel mode which will be isotap in this case now before I do this command I want to show you the tunnel interface So this is the tunnel interface that I have and I have assigned it an address of 2002db8 colon bcf colon 123 and the later part is derived using the MAC address of the interface. So this is using EUI64 notation because I asked it to use the EUI64 notation. But as soon as I say tunnel mode, I change my tunnel mode to IPv6 IP isotap there will be a change let's do the command again you can see that the first four blocks are fixed that I defined 2002 db8 bcf and then as we discussed that the fifth and the sixth block is fixed to 0 colon 5 vfe so this is the isotap identifier and then it is using 101 101 why because my loopback is 1.1.1.1 which here in this case is acting as a tunnel source I am using tunnel source as loopback 1 so whatever source I am using that source is inserted by converting it into hexadecimal into the address that my tunnel is using 
so we can see that before I did this command my tunnel address was my tunnel address was this and now after as soon as I changed my tunnel mode to isotap my tunnel address has been modified to this value I'm already running OSPF for version 3 so I just need to enable OSPF here and here I've just configured everything in area 0 so likewise I need to configure tunnel interface on router 2 as well tunnel source is loopback 1 IPv6 address again is in the same format db8 colon bcf colon 123 colon colon slash 64 and I'm going to use UI notation for that and I need to define my tunnel mode and I can run OSPF here to exchange the routing updates area 0 So let's just confirm what we have configured. So the tunnel address has been defined, tunnel source has been defined, and the tunnel mode is defined. We don't need to define the tunnel destination, it will be dynamically discovered. And uh, we are running OSPF here. So likewise on router 3, we need to configure the tunnel. I have already configured the tunnel here, just to save our time in this presentation. Tunnel 0 is already configured here with the, the address OSPF and the loopback uh, is my source and the mode is already changed to isotap but uh, we can see that still uh, we are running OSPF between router 1, 2 and 3 but still we are not able to form any neighbors and there should be OSPF neighborship coming up between router 1, and two, uh, 1 2 and 3 because they are uh, working in the same uh, layer 2 domain uh, but the still the neighbors are not up because as we discussed that the underlying IPv4 network is treated as a NBMA non broadcast multi access so we have to define our neighbors so on our one I will have to define my our neighbor here and my neighbor on our one the neighbor is router 2 and router 3 so let's check what is the IP address of router 2 We can see that router 2's address on tunnel interface is this. We are going to use the link local address for the neighbor. And because it's a NBMA network, so we can deal with priorities as well. Likewise, on 3, so router 3's address is this. see that a message came up that says that neighbor define defining a neighbor is allowed only on an NBMA network although it treats it as an NBMA network but uh, OSPF is not aware about this fact it's the IZATAC feature that IZATAC treats the underlying IPv4 network as an NBMA but OSPF is not aware about that so we have to specify specify the network type as non-broadcast and then we can define our neighbors here so the neighbors have been defined on R1 likewise we have to define our neighbors on router 2 also so before we define the neighbors we need to specify that the network type is NBMA so uh, non-broadcast and then we can define our neighbor so one of my neighbor is router 3 I take address and put it here 
थ्री इज लिंक लोकेट एंड देन राउट ऑफ वन तो राउट ऑफ वन विल बी वन ओ वन वन ओ वन एंड देन फाइनली वी हैव टू डिफाइन नेबर्स ऑन राउट ऑफ थ्री एंड बिफोर डूइंग दिस वी हैव टू स्पेसिफाई आवर OSPF network type as non broadcast and then we can define our neighbor so one of the neighbor is router 2 over router 1 and another neighbor is router 2 so uh, in summary you can see the messages are coming up neighbor 1 is up and neighbor 2 is up as well so in summary on the tunnel interface we need to define it uh, 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 IPv6 address again the first four uh, blocks can be of any choice and we just need to finish the command using UI64 notation uh, then we specify our tunnel source and as soon as we say that the tunnel mode is either tap the remaining four blocks are automatically engineered because the network IPv4 network is treated as an NBMA network so I have to define this is in OSPF that the underlying network is a non-broadcast and I have, to, I have to define my neighbors here now I can see on router 3 I can see my neighbors router 1 and router 2 these are my neighbors across the IPv4 network and uh, router 6 is this one here so on router 3 if I do a show IPv6 route we can see that the routing table I'm able to get 4444 four, 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 colon colon 4 which is uh, IPv6 network at router 4 and likewise at router 2 I have a IPv6 network uh, of 5555 five, 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 colon colon 5 so I'm able to connect to that network as well so there we go we are able to ping the IPv6 network across the IPv4 network using either tap tunneling. So we can see that the either tap scales better because it is dynamic in nature and we don't have to configure uh, full mesh of tunnels here. The tunnel is point to multi point in nature and also it uh, is easy to configure because only one interface is required on one router. I hope you like this session. Thank you very much.